Hey everyone, this is round two of my playthrough of Perils of the Lost Coast. I'm on the Brigandune chapter or scenario. We've closed the farmhouse. Kira is up, and so she's going to go probably, well, she's going to go to some other location. And the ones I have to choose from are the woods, a uh, old wooden bridge, or the waterfront. The woods is actually quite a scary place. The waterfront is terrifying because it's got a bunch of skull and shackles uh, monsters in there. And then finally, which isn't compatible, but I'm doing it anyway. And then finally, the wooden bridge is just scary because um, because the art looks scary. Do you, I, I don't want to cross that wooden bridge. Like, do I have to cross it? If I have to cross it, I'm not going to the wooden bridge. Uh, so in a weird way... In a very weird way, the woods is all of a sudden looking like strangely comforting to me. I don't know why, and I, I do believe I am very incorrect. I think this is going to go very poorly. But um, Kira is a healer, so that's what we've got going for us. Okay, the woods. Gnarled and twisted branches support a shadowy forest canopy that allows only enough light to encourage the growth of stinging nettles and other poisonous plants. Despite the tangled... Underbrush, nope, despite the tangled plants, swift, sly things dart, dart through the underbrush, but whether they are curious creatures of the woods or hungry predators is difficult to tell. In this location, undefeated monsters, other than villains or henchmen, are banished. So I only have to encounter a monster once. Whether they are defeated or undefeated, they go away. So that's a that's another that's a good thing. Um... I forgot, let's see, if a monster's power causes you to recharge a card, draw a card after doing so. Ah, okay, a monster's power. And actually, that did happen. The henchman, I think it was the bandit, made me recharge a card, and I forgot to draw, but that's okay. So I need to keep that global rule in mind. Okay, so it's it's the cleric's turn, so we're going to tick over a blessing c card and then send her into the woods and have her explore. And she immediately encounters an ogre. Well, this cleric has not gone to battle yet, I don't think. So this is kind of exciting. If undefeated, the ogre deals one combat damage to each other character at the location. It's effects like that where it's really convenient to sort of split the party, even if it's accidental. And with Harsk... It makes sense to split the party, honestly, because uh, he has the ranged feet, and he can just help characters out from a, from a distance. So that's really cool, and now that I'm saying it out loud, I, I think that's what I'll have to do. That's, that's the only way to play this scenario, now that I'm thinking about it. Like, if I'm playing with Harsk, I need to have him in somewhere else. Now, they do need to be co-located for her to heal him. So that's that's something to keep in mind. But generally speaking, I think it'll go faster and better if they're not together. Because then if one of them encounters the villain, the other one can temporarily close the location that they're located at. Which is a big deal. Because then, I mean, that would be what? Two, two locations would be known factors, and then there would be only one more location for the villain to run to. Then we would know where that villain was, and half our half the battle is fought um okay so anyway we're we gotta kill this ogre or or something let's see here what do we got we got um nothing for the guards just perception so this mace is what she's got to deal with to work with for your combat check reveal this card to use your strength and melee plus a d8 you may additionally discard for another, for a, an additional D4. I don't think that's going to be worth it. What's her strength in melee? D6 plus 2. Kind of similar, this this combination. Similar to, to Harsk. Because he, he was doing a lot of D6, D8, only the other way around. And, um, plus 3, so... I don't know about this. This is looking pretty bad to me. Um, I need a 12 across a D6 and a D8. That doesn't seem like that's going to be a likely scenario. 
So what I'm going to do, I think, is have Harsk use his special ability to recharge a card to add a d4 to combat checks at another location. Recharging is cheap because you get it back right away. I don't love the star, knight for, star knife for him, so he will send that to the bottom of his deck. And now Kira gets an extra d4. I don't know that that's enough to push it over, but it's better than not having an extra d4. Okay, a two. I would have rather a four, but it's not terrible, I guess. A two. Now, now it's terrible. Uh, there is literally no way for her to succeed, but to mitigate damage, let's just hope that she rolls a six on this d6. Two. So just, just for the record, she rolled a two on a d4, a two on a d6, a two on a d8, and she had a two bonus. So she rolled a total of eight against a 14 foe. That's really bad. Um, it's not good. So let's see. Um, the good news, I guess, is that she only has one, two, three, four, five, five cards in her hand. So she only has to take five damage. Wait a minute, is there armor in here? There is armor. So she could actually recharge this card to reduce damage by two. Okay. So does that even matter though? Because no. Well, it does. It, it matters, I guess. I mean, she gets to recharge instead of discard. That's That's how it matters. Well, we're in the woods. This is not a henchman. This is not a villain. So the ogre fortunately runs away. And honestly, I will take that. I will... I'll take that as a victory. Um, really, that's fine. That was terrifying and bad. And I'm really worried about the waterfront now <laughs> because there are some strong creatures in that. And I think in my head, I thought I was playing with Valeros and Sioni, and I forgot that these characters have different abilities and different strengths. This could be bad, is the bottom line. Okay, well, I'm going to send Harsk, as I said, to a different location. I'm splitting the party. And uh, the party, or the wooden bridge. A fragile bridge creaks and sways in the wind above a sheer ravine. The planks and hairy ropes have seen better days, but if careful, someone could probably make it across. Okay, so this is cool, though. When permanently closed, there's actually an effect. When you, earn your, it, when you end your turn here, you may bury a card from your hand to recharge a card from your discard pile. Okay, that's interesting. So if there's something you really don't like in your hand, you can come here to get rid of it and get something back. At this location, you may discard two cards to evade. All right. Succeed a dexterity or stealth check to close. Okay, that, that's, this is kind of interesting, honestly. That's the, these are interesting mechanics to play around with. Because I keep sort of reminding myself that Kira has an ability to rescue cards from your discard pile. Instead of your first exploration on a turn, you may reveal a card with the divine trait to choose a character at your location, shuffle 1d4 plus 1 cards from discard into their deck. Well, it's not her turn. What am I, what am I even thinking about that for right now? So this is Harsk's turn. Uh, he has 4 because he contributed to her combat earlier. I didn't flip over a timer deck for him, did I? Nope. Okay. So there's four cards in his hand. One of them's good. A light light crossbows is pretty good. Hey, this is a standard bear. That's an ally. He could use that. Anyone can use an ally. To get this ally, he needs to make a constitution check. Well, he's a dwarf. So his constitution is a d12. And in fact, his fortitude. if he uses fortitude, he gets a plus two to that. Um, can he use Fortitude? No, he can only use Constitution. 
So he needs a 7 on a d12. 8. This is, I th this is the first card I've gained, I think, in this in this scenario. So that's great. He got a he got a card. It's very good. I think I think he is then going to I think he might just discard this, honestly. There was a location that had some kind of penalty for discarding an ally. I guess that was the farmhouse, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that must have been the farmhouse. So, I think, um, I think we'll discard that ally. I did, right? That wasn't, if a monster's, if a monster causes you, yeah, okay. Um, that wasn't, like, somewhere else. No, okay. Must have been the farmhouse. I guess I could check the farmhouse card. If you would discard an ally, bury it instead. Okay. Yes, that was the farmhouse. We're not at the farmhouse. We are at the wooden bridge. So he is discarding the ally in order to explore again. He sees a blessing of Shaylin. Wisdom 4. I don't know what his wisdom is. Not a d4, I know that. It's a d6. Cool. D6. He has a fighting chance for a 4. Well, he rolled a 1 instead, so no blessing of Shaylin for, for Harsk. It's okay. Took over the timer deck. It is now Kira's turn. I'm going to draw. She was supposed to draw at the end of her turn. I just forgot. So she's now got five cards in her hand. And they are interesting cards. So the Guidance, discard this card to add one to a check. One. Discard to add one. That's really funny. If you do not have the Divine Skill, banish. Okay. Uh, one just doesn't seem like that's even worth a card. Oh, <laughs> honestly. Mending, discard this card to allow a character at your location to discard a weapon, armor, or item, and take a card of that same type from his discard. It's handy. And Holy Water. Discard this card to evade a bane with the undead trait. I think, can't she do that anyway? Because she's a cleric? Okay. So the important thing, though, here is that she needs divine cards in her hand because that's where her healing powers come from. And I want her to 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 use her healing powers to regain cards from discard decks. So instead of your first... Okay, so that's not it before. It's instead of exploration, you can reveal a divine trait to rescue some cards. Okay. And the potion of healing, of course, is in her discard deck. So instead of... Hmm, that's really... That's awkward. I don't know how much... I mean, at some point I'm going to have to do that, but I think I'm going to wait... Um, and instead, I'm going to just have her boldly explore. Potion of Healing, that's good. So this is a, an intelligence check. And I think I said her intelligence was a d6. She needs a 5 on a d6. She got a 6. So she gets the potion. Now, I do believe she's going to use this Potion of Healing right away on herself. Banish this card, so it's gone. But she gets to roll a d4. She'll roll a 1. No, she rolled a 4. That's great. Um, so she rolls a, f a 4 to get 4 cards. Are they just random cards, it says? Or... Yeah, random cards from her discard deck. So I am shuffling, I'm shuffling. I'm I, I don't... I'm, I'm really hoping that the potion of healing is in here somewhere. I don't know, though. I wish I did, but I don't. One, two, three, four. Potion of Healing. That is exactly what I wanted. And where do these go? They go back into her deck. So it doesn't actually say whether... It doesn't say to recharge them. So back into a deck, to me... It doesn't say to shuffle the deck. I, I'll, I guess I'll shuffle, because it just says back into the deck. So... 
I, I feel like if it if it wanted you to put them at the bottom of the deck, it would have said recharge the cards. And that's not what it said. Okay, so she's got five cards, so she doesn't have to do anything. But she could. She could spend a blessing to explore again. I think we're going to do that. Traitor. Traitor. That kind of looks like Mariciel, Mariciel, the rogue. But not exactly. Not really. I guess she only looks like her because there's blades or whatever. Um, yeah, weaponry behind her. Uh, okay, so anyway, traitor. Combat of 11. Before the encounter, discard a random ally from your hand. Joke's on you, traitor. I don't have an ally. Cool. Uh, okay, so I guess I'm going to... The card that I was making fun of, uh, I think I'm going to actually use it. So this is discard this card to add one to a check. If you do not have the divine skill, yeah, we do. Succeed at a divine four check to recharge instead of discarding. I will take that chance. Uh, her divine skill is d12. Was I, have I been rolling wrong for her her divine skill? I feel like I've not rolled a d12 for her. Maybe I'm just maybe I haven't because it hasn't come up yet. So anyway, divine d12 plus two. So she and she needs to get a four. So she basically just needs a two on a d12. That's easy. I don't see what could possibly go wrong. Two. See, told you. Okay, so she gets to recharge this guidance card rather than discarding it. So that's a good thing. And now she is going to have to go to battle with, I think, no weapon. That'll be fun. Uh, and she's got a melee strength. No, I think she just has to roll, I think, just a d6. I'm going to have to consult the rules on that one. Yes. Wep uh, if you don't have a weapon, you just use your strength in melee. So that's a d6 plus 2. She does have this blessing. So maybe I'll discard that. So now she's doing a d6 and a d6 with a plus 2 bonus against an 11. So she needs a 9 on 2d6. I bet I know a way I could get her an extra d4, though. So I think Harsk will... Yeah, I think Harsk is going to discard his short bow, because he's using his light crossbow anyway. Nope, he's not going to discard it. Oh, it's so much better. He's going to recharge it. That's, yeah, he can do that all day. Like, that is not a problem. Okay, so he's just recharging a short bow. She gets a, it's, that's practically free. D4. So she needs a 9 across 2d6 and a d4. 2, of course, that's what she rolls. 4, that's better. So she's got 6. She needs a 3 or better on this d6. 6. She has defeated the traitor. Takes no damage. That's really good. That was just a plain old monster, so... Not actually that bad. Not, not I mean, I wish it had been a henchman, because then we could have closed the location. But it wasn't. Okay, so that is probably going to be her turn. Yeah, it is. Uh, and she's going to draw back up to five cards. Oh yeah, I forgot to say. So... I've given her a little bit of a bonus because I did play through the Rise of the Rune Lord, the, the Burnt Offerings adventure, so I figured it was only kind of fair to give myself the Sahidra, the Sahedrin Medallion, which I can discard to reduce damage dealt by four. It's not game-breaking. Technically, she shouldn't have it. Sioni, Sioni should have this, uh, or, or I guess maybe Valeros, but... Um, I think it would be better for a caster, because if you succeed on a arcane or divine check of 9, then you get to just recharge it. So, yeah, it's a little bit out of place here, but 
I just kind of, I decided I wanted, because otherwise I was never going to use that card. Um, and, and that just didn't seem like fun to me. That's Kira's turn. And now it is Harsk's turn. So he is going to, to go over the timer deck and explore. Ambush. That's not good. The difficulty to, def to defeat the barrier is increased by the adventure deck number. Okay, that doesn't apply. If defeated, we can explore again. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. That I will take. Oh, no, no. Yeah, okay. I was going to say he needs to dr draw back up, but I don't think so. I think he sacrificed some cards. I feel like he should have four cards, though, because he, he recharged one to help her out remotely. But I don't know. I, I've lost track now, so I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I think it's okay. So, what is this? This is a wisdom perception, dexterity, or acrobatics. So I don't need to be looking at my cards. I need to be looking at his skills. And I remember that he has a perception plus two. He also has dexterity though, and that's a plus. Well, that's ranged. Okay, so he's he's got dexterity on a D eight. Well, this is rather bad, because he can't succeed. If undefeated, examine the location deck until you find a monster. Encounter it, subtracting one from each die roll in the check. Shuffle the remaining cards into the location deck. If undefeated, examine the location deck. Okay, find a monster. Yeah, got it. Encounter it. Subtracting one from each die rolled in your check. Shuffle the remaining cards. Oh, back into the location deck, I guess is what it's saying. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so if he rolls his perception, and he has, he has nothing, right? Well, that's not true. All right, he has this blessing, so I'm going to discard the blessing to add a die to the check. And the die that I'm going to add to this, I guess, would make sense... I'll just use his dexterity. So he'll roll two d8s in an attempt to get a nine. Normally I'd feel kind of good about that, but I've just been rolling. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I got an eight uh, on one d8. I can't roll less than a one. So he has defeated the ambush. He's gotten away from the ambush. If defeated, we can explore again. Perfect. I will explore again. Scurvy Zombie. No problem. This is from the Skull and Shackles deck, so this is not technically compatible with this base set, but you know what? I have found that it's actually pretty compatible. It just happens to be really, really hard. The Scurvy Zombie is immune to fire, mental, and poison. No problem. Have the damage dealt by the Scurvy Zombie. Rounding up, if undefeated, each other character at your location summons and encounters another scurvy zombie. If defeated, we can attempt to close this location. All right. So that's fun. And let's see. He doesn't have any blessings, unfortunately. He's down to just the bare essentials. And I guess what he's going to do is use what he can. So he'll use his light crossbow. I believe there was no... Nothing he can do to, like... Oh, he could discard this to add a d4. And then we could go back, reunite with Kira, get some health back. That's a risk, though. I, I don't want to lose his only weapon. Like, lose track of it. Alright, so I guess what I'm going to do is say that he... Well, not say. He, he does have a ranged... Right, his ranged bonus is a dexterity ranged plus three. He's got a d8. He's going to reveal his light crossbow to be able to roll two d8. So he's looking for a ten on two d8. Two. He needs an eight. Three. So he fails. So he got an eight total. So that's a lot of damage. Um... Luckily, he only has two cards in his deck. What I'm going to do cleverly is recharge this to reduce the damage. 
doesn't really matter. This, this still has to get discarded, but now I've only discarded one, not two. So that's better for Harsk. And now uh, he's not at the woods, right? Yeah, he's at the wooden the wooden bridge. So this monster is undefeated and gets shuffled back in the t into this deck. And we do not get to make a check to... Um, we don't get to make a check to close the location because Harsk's, um, Harsk screwed it up. Okay, so end of his turn. I mean, he's got literally nothing else he can do. He's got five new cards. He only has three cards in his draw deck, so that's not good. He's got his light crossbow back, or one of his light crossbows back. He's got a blessing of the gods. He's got a crowbar, and he's got a crow. Crow and a crowbar. Uh, recharge this card to add 1d6 to acquire a weapon, ally, or an item. That's cool. Okay. So Harsk needs to reunite with Kira. That's absolutely imperative at this point. So it's not his turn. It's Kira's turn. Turning over a blessing timer deck. And I'm just going to have her leave this location and join Harsk at the wooden bridge. As lovely as the woods have been, we're in trouble. So... She is going to forego her exploration check. Oh, wait. At the end of his turn, he's allowed to scry. I forgot about that. So he scries. It's an a it's a sage. It's an ally. That's good to know. Um, and now, as long as she can reveal a, divine, a card with a divine trait, she's got that. She can now reveal a card with a divine trait to choose a character. She chooses Harsk. And shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from this card back into his deck. Bet she rolls a... Oh, 5. She rolled a 5 on a d4, <laughs> essentially. Uh, so random cards, right? Yeah, I think so. So I'll just kind of shuffle, shuffle quickly, shuffle a little bit, shuffle a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he's only got 2 now in his discard pile. And his discard deck is looking a lot better. So that was just huge. I mean, that's honestly game-changing. Um, the, only, the only problem with it is that it does cost a whole turn, you know, an, an exploration round. So I guess what she's going to do is spend a blessing to gain an ally. I mean, I'm assuming she's going to gain this ally. I don't really know. It's a wisdom check. Um... Wisdom for Kira is a d12. Unfortunately, all she ever rolls is a 2. Told you. Uh, so she's not going to gain this ally. So that was her turn. And we can now flip it over to old Harsk here. And he's he's back. I feel I'm feeling good about Harsk. I mean... I feel like these two are a little bit underpowered in general. Like, compared to Valeros and Sioni... I mean, Sioni was attacking with, like, a d12 every single time with a plus two bonus. Harsh, uh, Valeros was doing generally, like, a d10 and a d8 or a d6, or sometimes 2d10, sometimes 3d10. Completely different game. Um, completely different game. So, that's okay. I just kind of wonder if maybe Harsk should go somewhere else, because once again, he's actually more useful to Kira from a distance, because he can he can do that ranged assist from another location. So that's what I'm going to do, sending him to a different location. It's his turn next, and we'll do that next time. Thanks for watching.